that we have is what is your brothers and friends for? You ever wonder why is my brother always why do we always fight all the time? Okay? Alright, so Proverbs 17 and 17 A friend loveth at all times but a brother is born for adversary. Now, adversity there we go, adversity Sorry, <laughs> um, I, I ain't put much thought to this tonight, <laughs> okay? I, I know I'm at the beginning and I can start over, but look, I'm not going to. Okay, <clears throat> who and what is love? So, <clears throat> people always wonder, you know, who defines love? What exactly is love? You know, and you, nobody knows exactly what love is until, until they actually get in the right spot for it. Then you know you have found love. You can feel the love. Okay? So, we want to go to 1 Corinthians 13. And we want four and five. Charity <clears throat> suffers long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity uh, veneweth not itself, is not puffed up, does not believe itself unseemly, Seeking not her own, is not easily provoked, thinking no evil. Rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Beareth all things, believing all things, hopeth all things, enduring all things. Now, charity is love. Charity means love. Um, but yes, like when you give something away, um, that's love, okay? They call it charity, which it should read what it is, okay? Uh, love suffers long and is kind. Love in the if not, okay? And you get where I'm coming from. So, love is the best thing there is what you what love is all right now we know what love is now let's find out who is love so let's go to first john first john four and look at that just turn the page i'm right here at it that was cool all right first john 4.16 Okay? 
And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. If you believe that God the Father sent His Son, Jesus Christ, down to us, then <clears throat> you believe it that it is. Okay. That it actually happened. Alright, so here we go. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. And God in him. It don't matter what people do to you. You know, say, say to yourself, it doesn't really matter. Am I going to remember this next year? How about next month? You know, it is better that if you forget and forgive. You know, it, it is, that is the way that you have to train yourself. Is to forgive. I know there is some things that is so hard to forget. And sometimes it just makes you so mad. I'm that way too. Okay. Alright. What day is better than another? Is there any day that's better than another? No. Every day should be a, a, a this, you know, just a day. I mean, that's the way I feel about it. You know? Every day is the same. You know? So let's go to Romans 14. Alright? And we want five. And I'm just going to read on down. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Alright, so if you are serving Jesus Christ... And you esteem only Sunday. Okay? That's the only day that you're going to give God. But if you esteem every day alike. Okay? Like, you should have him in remembrance all the time. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. In other words, it's saying you're the one that has to persuade yourself whether you're going to... Um, Give God the honor that he deserves on an everyday basis, or is it just one day? He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doeth not regard it. So in other words, if you don't want to give that day to the Lord, then you're not going to give it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord. For he giveth God thanks, and he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. So, in other words, whether you are eating and praying and saying, thank you, Lord, for the food, or whether you're uh, <clears throat> not eating, you still should give God thanks. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. You're not going to live without people, and you're not going to die without people. You're going to have people right there. And if there's nobody there, God most definitely is there. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. So, you are the Lord's no matter what you do on a daily basis or a weekly basis or whatever. You put your life into the Lord. For to this end Christ both died and rose and received that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. Okay? But why doest thou judge thy brother? Or why doest thou set at not thy brother? For we shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Alright, so. Here, people judge me for saying what they call a cuss word. I'm not per putting a curse on anybody. I had rather put a blessing on someone than I would a curse. So, Judging someone, like I get, 
Like, people get judged for, like, their hair color or they're too fat, you know? But one day, they're going to be sitting in that same chair you are, 11. For it is written, I live, saith the Lord, and every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall, shall confess to God. So when every one of us shall give an account of himself to God, you're going to give an account for everything that you judge. And if you are um, stingy, you know, if you are stingy, <clears throat> you're going to give an account. And if you are hateful to someone without a cause and all, then you are, you know, you're going to be judged. That's like um, someone sent me a video, and, they, and I asked them, I, I liked what the woman said, and I, but I'm not understanding what you want me to get out of it. And she thought I was offended. I'm not offended. I, didn't, I don't understand what she wanted. But she apologized and she thought she offended me. Oh, you're not offending me. And all. And, I mean, I don't see it that way. Because I'm like, I don't, I don't understand what she wants, you know. But okay, we're going on. 13. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore. But judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. So, I, am, I do not feel like I am putting my words out there for a stumbling block. So, don't, don't try to come out there... And, and say that my words are a stumbling block. And I'm going to explain to you why I feel this way. Because when you go over there to the black mirror. And you turn that black mirror on. I don't care what program you watch now. You're going to hear the Lord's name in vain. You're going to hear all the words that I spoke. And you overlook them. Because they're coming from the black mirror then who is in the wrong? If you, <clears throat> let's put it this way. Let's, uh, let's just slap it out there. The preachers will not tell you, hey, look, your TV set that you have is the Satan's tool, okay? A black mirror, okay? We're, uh, wait a minute. I hear a door knock. Knock, knock, knock. Why, who's at my door? I open the door, and there stands Satan. Wait a minute. All I have is a button to push now, and I have invited Satan in. And if you don't believe me, why don't you start going by the Ten Commandments, just by the Ten Commandments, and see how many sins you can come up with in one program. And how many cuss words that you could come up with in that pushing of a button or however you turn your TV on. Then you will see that that little bitty uh, black mirror. Yeah, uh, that's what it is. A black mirror. They love darkness more than they do the light. And see what that does to you. Okay, let's go on to 14. Now let's read 13 over. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. TV set, there's your stumbling block. There's one of them. All right, 14. I know I am persuaded by the Lord Jesus Christ, that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Alright, to you, if you are saying that cuss words 
uh, is unclean, then um, why do you have it in your TV? Why do you have it? Uh oh, I got a cat wanting in. <laughs> And you, on, on top of that, and um, um, I'm not saying this to be mean. I'm trying to teach you something here. Um, I'm trying to get you to see that even though you go to a church, they are not going to tell you the truth. English language was writ was written for curses you know evil it was evil if 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 not if you if you don't think about this how satan you remember me writing satan these are not the that's not the only word let's look at there 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 okay all right um looks like it's over there, it's in there. Hey, they're coming. Hey, you know, can you understand? What, you got different uh, uh, there's. Look it up. See how many words there is that are just there's. Can you get where I'm coming from? Why don't we have just one word for it? You see? Okay. Now. Let's go ahead and go on to 15. But if thy brother be greed with thy meat, now walkest thou not uh, charitably, destroy not him with thy meat, for whom God di uh, Christ died. Now, we're talking physically and spiritually here on this meat part. Okay? So, if if I'm, 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 I'm going to use the pork because the pork, it's unclean. God gave us a reason. Yes, he died on the cross. Yes, he took away our sins. But let's look at this uh, uh, pig as a health issues. I don't care how much you cook that uh, uh, pig. It is going to give you um, health issues like um, what is that your blood pressure is going to be going nutty your uh, it has a worm in it that it doesn't die look this stuff up you'll see it see how they kill pigs see how they castrate pigs see how they do pigs and I'm gonna tell you cows are the same way like I said in my other video, I'm seeing these animals. It, it is making me want to be a vegetarian. Because, look at this way. You have, uh, I think it's called testosterone or something like that. I can't remember what the name of it is. But when these, okay, when you get scared and all, you get energy, right? Because you're ready to fight and make your way out. You, you have to have that energy. Feel the energy from when, like when you get scared. Or when you get mad. Feel that kind of energy. Think about these animals that are dying. What kind of energy they're, they're letting off. Okay? If you, if you, Kill the animal the right way, like God says to do it, and all. Then you're not going to have all that junk going on in you. Okay, let's see. Where am I at here? Oh, day is better than the other. That is where I'm at. What side of your heart do you go by? Get down off my table. Go on. Get down off my table. Get down off my table. Okay. Let's go to Ecclesiastics. Keep on going. But no. Yeah. Ecclesiastics is 
after Proverbs. There it is. All right. Uh, let's see, where am I? Okay. What side of the heart do you go by? Okay. So we want 10, Ecclesiastics 10, and we want verse 2. Let's go to number 2. A wise man's heart is at his right, but a fool's heart is at his left. Yea, also, when he that is a fool walketh by the way, his wisdom faileth him, and he saith to everyone that he is a fool. All right. That first one. Okay. Okay, do you teach about we all sin? You were born a sinner. Let's go back here to Romans. Um, Romans 3. We have 21. Romans 3, 21. Okay, here we go. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon, upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. All right. For everybody that believe, the righteousness is the same. For who believes in him? Now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. So the the witness the the, the law is a witness. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, number twenty-three. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I don't care how big you think you are. You sin. I don't care. It doesn't matter. We are all not perfect. We're not going to be. If we were perfect, then we put our place in, the, in front of Jesus Christ. All right. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, whom God has set forth to be a participation through faith in His blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sin that are past and through the forbearance of God. I declare, I say, at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier in of him which believeth in Jesus. Okay? So you're justified by believing in Jesus and it brings you to your righteousness, but you're still going to sin. Okay. So, who should you not sleep with? Let's go down here. Or get married to, or anything like that. You know, uh, can you understand what I'm saying? Who should you not marry? You know? Okay. Okay. Leviticus. Going to Leviticus. Uh, we're going to look at 18. Oh, come on. One page at a time. I'll get there. All right. 18 and 22. One more page. And now it doesn't want to do it. All right. 22. Do do do. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as womankind it is an abomination. Neither shall thou lie with beasts to defile thyself therein. Neither shall any woman stand there before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. So a man should not sleep with a man. What was that? A man should not sleep with a man. And a woman should not sleep with the woman. And you should not lie down with an animal. Because it makes confusion. And boy, I can go into that one. Mm, good lordy. I had an aunt. And my, we were going to my aunt's house. And my daddy covered my eyes and took me out of there. 
but I saw what was going on. And I, that, mm. okay, let's go back to uh, 1813. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's, or um, thy mother's sister, for she is thy naked kinman. So you just shouldn't uncover your mommy's nakedness, your your daddy's, none of your kin folk, your brother. You should not sleep with your kin folk. Okay, okay. But I don't know if they teach that in church or not. But I'm me and Rick's like. Yeah, yeah, we're kept me. Uh, we don't know. We don't. And we're like, well, it's something that they really need to know if they don't, you know. So, all right, let's see. Mm. Okay, we got that one. All right, here's one. Now, most the... Most of preachers are going to, when you say, should I go and, and get a flu shot? Should I go to the doctor, you know, and get, I bet you anything, they're going to say yes. See, they are government funded through that 501c3. And they have to be, they have to. Because if they don't, then they can be took, that. 501c3 be taken away from them, then they have to pay taxes. They have to keep up with every dollar bill that comes into that building. And they have to give an account because of taxes. Okay? Okay. So, what does the Bible say about that? Let's go to Matthew. Oh, there goes that. Matthew and 9. Matthew 9. There we go. Matthew 9 and 12. One more page. Matthew 9 and 12. But when Jesus heard that he said unto them, They that behold need not a physician, but they that are sick. Now, if you are sick, then go to the physician. Go to the doctor. But if you're not sick, don't go. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. Okay? So, if you are sick, then go. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you can get healed by Him. If, if you've ever been close to him and really felt his presence, you're going to keep working to get back to that presence of God and walk with him. It is the, is you look, you cannot give me any other kind of drug on this earth that would, would even compare to it. The love that you feel, the love is so great. You ought to try it. I'm telling you, ought to. All right. All right. Do you look down on the homeless, the jail? I know there's a lot of them that people, the uh, preachers, they go to the jail and they go to the hospital and all this. But do they actually go because they have to go to keep up a righteous appearance? Can you get where I'm coming from? Well, I'm just going to tell you you can go and read this. Then that way, you all can go and read it. Uh, it's Matthew 25. Because we're going to be reading it here pretty soon. And it's Matthew 25 and 32. And I think it goes on. Yeah, it goes on down to 46. Yeah. So, I'm going to be reading that probably next time, but I'm not sure which one I, uh, I have to. Alright, how about this? Did you know there's a book written on you? Yeah, there is. And you're the only one that can change the book. Nobody else can. Alright. 
Numbers, Deuteronomy. I want Deuteronomy. I want De Deuteronomy 30. Deuteronomy 30 and 19. Right? Deuteronomy 30. Yes, and 19. Now, <clears throat> so here is the book that is written on you. Okay? I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. So here is the book that's being written. Okay? It's recorded. How did how did things get recorded? Well, well, we now we have stuff like this iPad. You know, we have recorders. We have all kinds of way to record. So heaven and earth is recorded. Okay, so take a little birdie or something. And you're talking. How about this cat sitting over here? This cat right here can record. You can you see what I'm saying? Something is recording you. Something, even if it's an angel. Can you understand where I'm coming from? Okay. So, against you that I have set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing. Okay? Cursing. Don't be cursing. The words. Your English language is a curse. You have to be careful what you say. Oh, you're just a brat. You're not going to be good for nothing. And that kid grows up to be a, 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 a drug addict and uh, drunk all the time and, and worthless and nothing. What did you do to that kid whenever it was younger? You kept saying you're going to be good for nothing? Well, it ended up being good for nothing. But if you keep saying, hey, little Johnny, this isn't the way to act. You should act this way. It makes you look so much smarter. Can you get where I'm coming from? By your tongue. Okay? The tongue is deceitful above all things. All right. And, and I'm going to tell you, when I first, uh, most of you guys don't know who Emmy is. But when I first got Emmy, she cried all the time. I'm like, look, you've got to quit this. And there's things um, I will never, I cannot mention them. But her mom would say things not right. She doesn't do it no more. But it, I hope I got Emmy out of it. You know, um, I'm trying to make her see she's more blessed. They all are more blessed. You know. You try to lift them up so they don't throw somebody else down. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God and that thou mayest obey his voice. <coughs> and that thou mayest cleave unto him. For he is thy life and the length of thy days. That thou mayest dwell in the land with the Lord swore to thy fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Okay. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. There's the first one, there's the second one. We want number 6, and we want 14. Now, the question is... Should we should we set ourselves apart from the world view of things? Should we have a different outlook on our on our uh, on ourselves uh, on this world? What kind of view should we have on this world? All right, six fourteen. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For that fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness. Alright, so let's 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 look at it this way. You get on your black mirror and you like Beyonce or Britney Spears or I, I don't watch TV anymore. So I'm not, I mean, I can only go by some of the things that I remember. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, how about that, uh, that Tom character? Or how about the uh, weird-looking face guy that had his hair up like this or played on about something about animals? I don't remember their names. But anyway. Anyway. Should we be set apart from them? Yes, we should. Because that is darkness. Okay? We don't want to... Uh, would you dabble with a Ouija board? Would you? I don't think you would. At least I hope you wouldn't. But you're, when you dabble with the the blue or the black mirror, then you are uh, dabbling in the same thing, the world. And that's just like them stupid TV preachers. They have a worldview. Look at their helicopters. Look at their airplanes. Look at their cars. Look at their clothes. Look at their houses. Where is their view? Look at the people that are out sleeping in tents every night. The children that go hungry. And ask, ask yourself, why don't these people help these people out? Where is their heart? Their heart is on their self. Not to help people. And don't think that I have not took in homeless people. I have. And I have fed people. And I have gotten done wrong by these people. But you know what? They're not doing me wrong. They're doing Jesus Christ wrong and their self. Because it's like, okay, I've had enough of you. Goodbye. And just like Noah. Just like Noah. But for some reason, I cannot help but help him. God says he is going to be a thorn in your side, and that's that. All right, now I've got a couple more, but I'm going to take me a break, and then I'm coming back. Look, see, I'm going to see how far I've got done. I may call it quits, and I may not. This is how to donate to my PayPal. You come down here to Poor Man Sewing, and you mash on Poor Man Sewing. Then you go over here to About. You mash on About. And right here is to donate to Poor Man Sewing. Thank you. I appreciate everything that is donated. It will go to the sewing shed that we are working on. Or anything that you want me to put it on there, just leave a note on there. And I will see what it says. And I really do appreciate you donating and watching my channel. A lot of hugs and kisses to you.